Oh, I got the high sign. Wait, now we have the high sign. <clears throat> We had one. That's it. No. <laughs> sure, go right ahead. Go ahead. I mean, it's up to you. No, go ahead. I usually would not be one. It's all good. Now, I'm going to, uh, I would just like to say welcome to everybody who has a mother today. And uh, so, if you have a mother, then happy Mother's Day to you. <laughs> We're going to sing about uh, a beautiful day today. Hold me, this child away, strong in the faith, Lord you are the refuge, I can't wait to get to, I've been let a day go, can't let a day go by, without thanking you for the joy that you bring in my life, and you, there's something about the way, your sun shines on my face. It's a love so true, I can never get enough of you. This feeling can't be wrong. I'm about to get my worship on. Take me away. It's a beautiful day. Do, 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 yeah. It's a beautiful day. Yeah. When trouble seems to rain on my dreams. Not a big, not a big deal. Let it wash all the bugs off my windshield. Cause you're showing me in you I'm free, and you're still the refuge. I just got to get to, so I won't let a day go, won't let a day go by. So put the drop top down, turn it up, I'm ready to fly. And ooh, there's something about the way. Sunshine's on my face. Is the love so true? I could never get enough of you. This feeling can't be wrong. I'm about to get my worship on. Take me away. It's a beautiful day. Do, 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 do. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. Yeah. Well, I've got no need to worry. I've got no room for doubt. No matter what's coming at me, you'll always be the beautiful I sing about. There ain't no limitation to your amazing grace. Your amazing grace. And ooh, there's something about the way the sun shines on my face. It's a love so true, I can never get enough of you. There's something in the wrong. I'm about to get my words to come. Take me away. It's a beautiful day. Do, 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 do. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. Do, 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 do. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Special word of welcome to you if you are here for the first time this morning. Um, there will be shortly a uh, QR code on your screen and uh, they'll get there. There we go. Um, and that's the bulletin for this morning. And so you just shine your phone, um, turn the camera on and, and point it right at that QR code. You can pick up this morning's bulletin. There are also QR codes around the sanctuary for those of you who are here in person this morning. Um, we will have communion as a part of today's worship, and um, all are welcome to participate in that. And so um, to you, our friends online this morning, encourage you to get some bread and wine or grape juice and, and have those ready because we certainly would um, love to have you participate with us in the sacrament this morning. If you are new around here and would like to know more about this community we call Faith, 
um, invite you to look through the bulletin and um, there are links for different things to um, to find out information and or you can email us at info at faithgolden.org and, um, and we would love to chat with you one-on-one um, -on -one and answer any questions that you have. Um, our host family for this morning is Betty, Doug, and Ruth Ball. And so, no, it's not Ruth Ball, though, is it? Ruth Fark. Far. Far, excuse me, Far. Betty's mom. And uh, and so, so I'm going to run. The, they got it. Awesome. So I'm going to um, let them introduce themselves to you. All right, Doug. Doug, you have to hold it right here. Yes. There you go. You got to hold the microphone close to your mouth. You. There you go. Yeah, I did some more. There you yeah, go. I, I got into the business of installing audio and video stuff, too, for about 10 years. Now I'm retired and enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> good morning, good morning, and happy Mother's Day. I am just so honored and blessed to be here with my mom today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed meeting good friends here and here in Golden, and I'm here just about a year, and I uh, enjoy Faith Church, uh, Faith Lutheran Church also. I officially and I told her just the very beginning that home is my Sunday school and I'm my wife. I thank you for being so patient with me and for me, and you all. Um, Ruth, I want to be like you when I'm 98. Mm -hmm. Well, um, let's take a moment and uh, if it helps you to, to center, close your eyes, uh, but just take a deep breath, center ourselves in this place and space uh, for this time of worship this morning. I invite you to stand and join me in the call to worship. As we gather this morning, let us invite Jesus into our hearts to truly change them. Risen Christ, when darkness overwhelms us, may your dawn beckon. 
When fear paralyzes us, may your touch release us. When grief torments us, may your peace enfold us. When memories haunt us, may your presence heal us. When apathy stagnates us, may your challenge renew us. When courage leaves us, may your spirit inspire us. When despair grips us, may your hope restore us. And when death threatens us, may your resurrection light lead us. Amen. If your heart in the streams of, streams of life, let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of its mercy. He cries out to
It is a beautiful prayer to start our worship this morning, knowing that our God is here with us. And sometimes those prayers like, come Lord Jesus, come, are prayers that open our hearts to God's presence that is already with us. And so I, I pray that you will feel that presence with you this morning and also the gift of God's peace, a peace that goes beyond the circumstances of today that is based in who our God is, not who we are. And, um, and so we're going to take a few moments here to share God's peace with one another. And I encourage you to really let this be a time where we share God's peace, not just the, hey, hi, how are you? But look each other in the eye and wish each other God's peace. And so to start it up, oh, also, uh, if you are online with us or here in uh, the worship space, we always encourage you, pull out your phone and uh, to wish God's peace to somebody who might not be physically with you today as well. And so I say to you all this morning, may the peace of the Lord be with you all. Will you please take a few moments and share God's peace with one another? God's peace. As you finish up, I invite you to head back to uh, your seats if you are here in the sanctuary, but don't sit down. If you are a child of Sunday school age, do you notice how they just talk louder as soon as I start talking? I know. Like you're paying no attention to the person up front. <laughs> no, there's no illusions that I have any control. Yep, if you are a kid of Sunday school age three-ish up through fifth grade-ish, um, Miss Deanne would love to see you over here by the doors back here, and um, she'll head. You guys will head out to Sunday school. There you go. All right. And uh, for those of us here in um, the sanctuary and online, I'm going to turn it over to you. One of the things that's uh, one of the things that's great about this morning for me. Hey, Deb. There you go. One of the things that's great about uh, this morning for me is that we have. The peace of the Lord, which is fantastic, and Spider-Man. So I'm just saying that I feel especially well protected here and safe this morning. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy. The Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing, praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Rose of thunder, 
We're singing on the strength and glory and power be to you the only wise king. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was in his midst to come. of kings, you are my everything, and I will adore you. You may be seated. The first lesson this morning is from the first chapter of 1 John, verses 5 through 7. There is the message we have heard from, let me start over here, <laughs> after my wife moves the microphone. <laughs> this is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not know what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, is his son, washes us from all sin. The gospel reading for today is found in Luke 24 verses 13 to 35. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They still, they stood still, looking very sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had really hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since this happened. Moreover, some women of our group really astounded us. 
they were at the tomb early this morning, and when they and they did not find his body there. They came back and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe that all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them all the things about himself in the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is nearly over. So he went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? While he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And then they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were all saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told him what had happened on the road and how he would be made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Here ends the reading. He is risen. He is risen it was a little, little weaker this week. He is risen. He is risen okay, that's better. Have you ever been perplexed? By something. There are actually a lot of things that perplex me. Things like mosquitoes, snakes. I just have questions for God about these things. Why is it so much easier to see the bad rather than the good? Why are we drawn to the bad? Like bad news, right? Like that always gets the top of the, the line. Accidents. We all slow down to look. Don't say you don't. I've been in traffic with you all. <laughs> Everybody, like, you got to see what happens, right? Like, um, bad weather. We want to hear about what happened to the people who were in the, in the path of the tornado. I, why is it that? Why? Why? These things perplex me. Why do we internalize anything that cuts us down in a heartbeat? Anything that makes us feel less than and, and that. But we refuse to believe those things that build us up that help us to feel more than. The realities of the universe and stars and astrophysics, they perplex me. I was talking to one of our youth who is at the South Dakota School of Mines and Technology while he was home on a break and he's all excited because this summer he's working on a project with his professor and they're going to be mapping stars. In, and if you don't know what that means, they're doing math that is like starts here for me and goes like that, right? Like, I mean, regular physics perplexes me, let alone adding astro in front of it. But I'm glad that there are for people for whom that it doesn't. But have you ever been perplexed by something and then suddenly with new information or with someone's help, you get that aha moment? that feeling of understanding or of, of figuring it out. And it's a great feeling from, from learning how to tie our shoes to figuring out how far away stars are. That feeling of getting it is amazing, right? Yeah. Well, today, this is what is happening for some of Jesus' followers. Now, we have this idea that there were 12 disciples, there were, and at this point in the story, there were 11. 
And that's right. But scripture also tells us in a number of different places that there were way more than just the 12 or 11. I mean, earlier in the Gospels, they talk about how Jesus sent out the 70, right, two by two. Like they had to know enough about Jesus to know what they were going out to do, right? And in the Pentecost story, which we'll hear in a few weeks again, there were about 120 gathered there. Men, women, there were lots of followers. And on this first Easter day, there are many things happening with many of the followers. Remember, just a quick reminder, the women, a bunch of the women went to the grave on Easter morning. Thomas's story begins on Easter sometime on Easter day. These two followers are leaving Jerusalem sometime after the women went to the tomb on Easter, and they're walking to Emmaus, which is about seven miles away from Jerusalem. And then there's the story from last week where they were, were the disciples were fishing on the beach, and, and that actually happened after the Emmaus story. But it's easy to think because we, we hear the story in pieces, right, from week to week or whatever, that there's a long time in between. And I, I just want to remind us that this is all happening in pretty quick succession, and some of it is happening on top of each other. So it is still Easter day. And Cleopas and his friend are heading to Emmaus, and they are perplexed at what has happened. Clearly, they are a part of the followers. Clearly, they thought that Jesus was the Messiah in the Jewish understanding that the Messiah was the one who was going to come and redeem Israel from Roman rule. So when their own leaders turn Jesus over to be crucified, it doesn't compute. The Messiah is the one everyone is waiting for. But Cleopas and his friend are also perplexed by the women's story of that morning. Clearly, these two were a part of the group that heard the, woman, the women's story, but there is also clearly disbelief. Minds that cannot wrap themselves around this idea that Jesus might truly be alive. Even if they can't see him, they don't know what they just they know what they don't they know that they don't know what happened to him, but they can't seem to understand that Jesus, who said he was going to die and rise again, is actually alive. To me, they are trying to reckon what their eyes see and what their hearts want. And it leaves them sad and perplexed and wondering. And this is how Jesus finds them. He questions them like he has no idea what is going on, right? I wonder if Jesus' heart was also just a, a bit sad at how many refused already to believe that he had actually risen from the dead like he told them he was going to do. But so Jesus starts walking and talking with Cleopas and his friend, and he starts showing them how all the Old Testament prophecies and the things that are said about the Messiah line up with him, Jesus. Not this military might Messiah that the Jews were waiting to come that kind of had morphed Jesus into or the Messiah into. But in essence, Jesus is telling these two men, yeah, I know this is what you have been taught. But here is the reality of the Messiah. The truth of the Messiah is me. And we can see in retrospect um, yeah, um, that the two men felt the truth of what Jesus was saying. Because they ask later, right, were our hearts not burning within us? And yet, and yet, they don't recognize Jesus until he breaks bread with them. All the talking, all the conversation didn't make the um, impact that experience experiencing Jesus' presence did. Why do we break bread together every Sunday? 
It is not for some religious requirement. At least I hope that's not why you're here. Um, or something to, you know, the check off to do list. But we come here to break bread. We gather online and in person to break bread because in the breaking of the bread, we experience Jesus. In the breaking of the bread, our hearts recognize the passion that Jesus builds in us. In the breaking of the bread, we see Jesus for who he really is, and we experience his very real presence. Should not our hearts burn within us when we walk away from this table? Breaking bread, sipping wine, it's not just something we do. But it is here in bread and wine where Jesus meets us week after week after week and reminds us of who he is. Redeemer, Savior, lover of our souls. It is here we meet the one of passion and grace and who wants to fill us with passion and grace. When Cleopas and his friends' eyes are open, they cannot keep silent, right? I mean, the scripture tells us that they, remember, they invited Jesus to stay and eat with them because it was at the end of the day, right? But as soon as Jesus disappears, they can't keep silent. So what do they do? They race the seven miles back to Jerusalem. This is in the evening. No street lights, no headlamps to light the way, no flashlights. They take off on a dark road and race back to the, tell the other followers what has happened. And the others are like, hey, hey, that sounds great. Do you know that Simon saw Jesus too? And Cleopas and his friends are like, yeah, and we saw him too. It must be true. And I wonder if the women are just sitting there going, mm-hmm. We've known it all day. <laughs> what one or two couldn't convey in a way that caught people's heart. More and more and more people are seeing Jesus alive and realizing it is really true. And the passion bubbles up and the passion bursts forth. And the passion is what is grown in these people's hearts. And passion is what carries them out of the space behind closed doors. And passion is what will lead them eventually to the ends of the earth. I wonder if they grasped at all the impact that they would one day have on the world. And I wonder if they grasped at all that the impact that they would have would be far greater than any impact that would have come from a Messiah who simply um, freed the Israelites from Roman rule. I wonder, I wonder if they understood at all. My guess is no, that they didn't. Because the same is true for us today. And there is a lesson here for us. While it is good to read and study scripture, to know the story of God and God's people found in the Bible, to learn and gain insight and wisdom, that is good. But that is not the pinnacle of following Jesus. We have been told many times over, all the things we have to know, all the requirements for one who wants to share the gospel. Like you have to make sure that you know the right answers and you have to know and you have to know the right things. And, and if you don't think that's true, I should start counting the number of times I hear I don't know enough. I, I couldn't lead kids. I couldn't teach Sunday school. I can't lead a Bible study. I, I, I don't know if I can, can lead in church because I don't know enough. But what if gaining knowledge, just simply gaining knowledge, hinders the passion within sometimes? 
What if God is calling you and me into a place to share his love? And it doesn't matter if you have a seminary degree or a biblical studies education or if you've been studying the Bible for your entire life. What if what matters most is that you let your heart be filled with the passion of Jesus? Passion for a risen Lord. Passion for a God whose love will take him all the way to a cross. So we will know how deeply we are loved. So that we will know how far love will go for us. Passion for loving God and loving others, which are his two great commands to us to do. Passion for people knowing that love of God. Passion for people experiencing that love through you and me. What if Jesus really wants is not that we know all the right answers, but rather that our hearts burn within us. Burn with knowing him. Burn for others to know him. Facts, figures, all kinds of things that can perplex us. They can drive us crazy trying to understand. But passion is what drives us. Hearts that burn with the love of Jesus is what will reach a world. My friends, I believe as we are here this morning... We do not understand the impact that our lives can have on the world. Just as the disciples didn't understand so long ago. I believe we have a hard time just absorbing that truth as well. And so my prayer for us today is this. May our hearts burn within us driving us out into God's world to share the joy, the love, the grace that causes our hearts to burn. Will you pray with me, please? Lord Jesus, we want to be in your presence. We want to know your love and your grace for us. And and sometimes that, that desire to know your love and grace gets so wrapped up in so many other things that we think are requirements that we lose our passion before we ever even receive it. So today, Holy Spirit, I pray boldly that you will stir up that passion in us for Jesus, for living with Jesus, for walking with Jesus, for knowing his love and hearing his call. May our hearts burn within us that we may not be able to keep silent. Pray this in your name and power. Amen. you stand with us today? Maybe all we need to know is this first line. He became sin who knew no sin that he might become his righteousness he humbled himself he carried the cross love so amazing Love so amazing, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel. Rescue for sinners, ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, His body the bread, His blood the wine. Oh,
Please remain standing while we proclaim our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, our Lord, the one who broke bread with Cleopas and his friends, who broke bread with the disciples on the beach and at a table on the night before he was crucified, is the Lord and Messiah who invites you to this table. And so for our friends online, I invite you to get your bread and wine or grape juice to designate one person in your space as the communion host for this morning and that they would hold your elements as we hold them here in the sanctuary this morning. And I invite you all then to join me in these words as we remember. On the night Jesus showed his greatest love for us, he took a piece of bread gave thanks for it, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today, saying, take and eat. For this is my body given for you. Whenever you eat of this bread, do it and remember me. And then for those of our friends online, I invite you to pick up your wine or grape juice and to join us. After supper, he took a cup of wine gave thanks for it and blessed it, and gave it to his disciples as he gives it to us today, saying, take and drink. For this is the new promise in my blood, 
shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of all your sins. Whenever you drink from this cup, do it and remember me. And as we remember and as we prepare then to come, then I invite you to pray with me the prayer Jesus prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. For those of you joining us online this morning, I invite you, if you are with others, um, to share the bread and wine or grape juice with each other with words such as, this is the body of Christ given for you, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. If there is someone in your space this morning that does not receive communion, I invite you to um, shower them with words of blessing. And it can be something as simple as remember Jesus loves you or whatever words feel appropriate for you this morning. If you are communing by yourself this morning, please know that you are not truly by yourself, but that you commune with all the saints this morning. For those of us who are here in the sanctuary, there will be two stations up here in the front, and, um, and then there will be, you'll receive a little squirt of hand sanitizer on your way. Ushers will help you on the sides, move to the center, and um, then you receive the piece of bread, and then um, move next station will be wine and grape juice. Wine is darker and on the outside, grape juice is lighter and on the inside. We do have gluten-free wafers as well, so please just let us know if you need that. And, um, and if you do not, if you choose to not partake in communion this morning, we, all, we still invite you to come forward and to receive words of blessing for yourself. If you're young, and you take communion, remember to put your hands out like this. So that helps the servers know that you do take communion because we don't want you to miss out on that either. My friends, your Lord and Messiah is calling you this day to come to break bread with him and to be fed with the bread of life. So I invite you to come. Our prayer. 
tent. Come and thy people bless and give thy word success. Spirit of holiness, on us descend. Come, holy comforter, thy sacred witness bear. In this glad hour, thou who almighty art, now rule in every heart, and there from us depart, Spirit of power. Great one in three, eternal praises be, hence evermore, thy sovereign majesty, may we in glory see, and to eternity love and adore.
Will you please pray with us? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day today. We especially pray and thank you for the mothers everywhere today. Uh, our own mothers, new mothers, and for those, uh, some of us being a mother also. We thank you for our families here and elsewhere and the love that they give us. We pray for our community of faith and the community of Golden. We ask that you be with our educators, our community leaders, our servicemen, police, and fire protectors. If it be your will, Lord, pray for peace in the world, especially in U Ukraine, and let our light shine in the world. Let hearts be softened from hate to love. Let minds be opened to listen for fire. Please put fire firearms down and, and let peace and happiness prevail. Be with us in this coming week and, and be, bring us back safely next week. In your name we pray. Amen. So a few announcements before we go on our way today. Uh, first of all, uh, there is on the pillar out in the lobby, there's um, like little clotheslines. And um, on those, those clotheslines are little slips of paper. And, um, and on those slips of paper are needs that we have for kids camp. And so um, kids camp is in July, the third week in July. And um, as many of you well know, it is the craziest and most fun week of the year. And, um, but there are lots of things that we need in order um, to be prepared for the 300-ish kids that will be here um, on that week. So um, if you wanna just pull one of those um, tags off and then return it when you return um, the items that are on that. For our friends online, if you want to donate towards helping with the costs of Kids Camp, um, scholarships as well as stuff and um, that, you can just go to uh, the FACE website at faithgolden.org and um, and donate on there. But there's a, and there when you do that, there's a memo line and make sure that you put in the memo for Kids Camp. And that way we'll make sure that those dollars get um, to the appropriate place. Um, and so, uh, like we always say, even if you don't like kids, there's a place for you at Kids Camp. So this is one of those places that you can be. Um, and then uh, Carolyn, I'm gonna invite Carolyn up here. Um, and she is working with Cherry um, in can on ca their mission is cancer support. So um, Carolyn's got some news for you today. Thank you. <laughs> Get tangled up in the courts. First of all, Cherry and I would like to thank you all for donating to our Relay for Life uh, fundraiser. And for those of you who have not donated, we would encourage you to do so. Um, we will have help out in the lobby for online donations uh, again today. And next week, we're going to honor and celebrate some of Golden's survivors and caregivers in the service um, next week. And part of Relay for Life um, organization is for survivors to tell their story of their journey through cancer. So today I'm going to tell you my story, but I'm going to try to make it very brief. It started in the week before Christmas in 2017, and I caught my comb on my scalp and opened up a lesion. And in December or January of 2018, I was diagnosed with squamous cell skin cancer. And I thought, oh, skin cancer. How many of you had skin cancer? 
um, and don't think anything about it. I never thought of myself as being a cancer patient at that point in time. However, by November of 2019, I decided I was a cancer patient because I had my first craniectomy. And my cancer had spread to my brain and my skull. And that was my first experience with it. I failed chemo, I failed radiation twice, got METs in between each case and had to have a second craniectomy in January of 2022 and was told then I had terminal stage 4B squamous cell skin cancer. And they encouraged me to go on a drug that was developed and approved in the latter part of November of 2019, no 20, I should say. It was 19 when the drug was discovered and approved. And um, at that point in time, I said, why should I take this drug? It only has a success rate of 50%. I failed everything else that was in the 98% category as far as success rate. And so was not real excited about doing this. Um, my three surgeons talked me into doing it and say, well, let's just try it. Please try it. Um, you can't give up is what they told me. And I started the drug in March of 2020. I am still on the drug. I haven't had a tumor since that time. <laughs> so that is why I support Relay for Life. Um, it, the American Cancer Society um, supported the funding for the development of the drug, and it's the only drug on the market for squamous cell skin cancer. And there are a lot of cancers out there that have no drugs that work effectively for them. And it is a crapshoot in the medical field as far as what drugs they put you on when there is nothing that's specific for that disease entity. So we've got to have more research to develop more drugs for this. And I kind of look at it as you've got to pay it forward. You can't wait till you get the diagnosis of cancer and expect the magic drug to be there. We have to get the drugs there beforehand. And therefore, I am a relayer because of my drugs that I've received from cancer. And we're learning to live with the side effects of this drug. It's pretty ugly uh, at times, but not as ugly as chemo was and radiation, I have to say that. And so I would like to encourage all of you to support Relay for Life and its endeavors. Thank you. You're looking pretty good, Carolyn, for not supposed to be in here, being here. That's right. Uh, Janie and um, Amy, <laughs> they're like, we don't want to go after that. But or, it's. <laughs> I completely reject following that triumphant, <laughs> remarkable story. Um, okay. Uh, my name, um, sorry, good morning. And I too want to wish a very happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. I myself am having a great Mother's Day when my kids found out, these two boys in the white shirts, that I was going to make an announcement. Uh, they threatened to boo me. So <laughs> that's them. Ignore them. <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Amy Bittner. And um, I am one of six women who have been part of the committee for planning the women's retreat. And four of us are here today. Janie in the back, Jane you may be aware of, Beverly and myself are here today. Oh, and there's Leslie, five of us are here. Um, the one that's not here is Brenda. She's with her grandson today. Um, but uh, Brenda and I are the main contacts if you have questions about the women's retreat. Um, 
I just have to share this quick little story, which sounds so lame after <laughs> the keynote speaker. Um, I was pondering what I wanted to say today, and I realized that 18 years ago, on Mother's Day, I was standing in front of my church in Chicago making an announcement. And when I said Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, they burst out laughing because I had waddled up to the top and I was eight and a half months pregnant <laughs> with the boy in the white shirt closest to the aisle um, and just two weeks away from becoming a mother. And now my little baby is 15 days away from becoming a man. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be a long ride home when he <laughs> tells me how he feels about me sharing this. <laughs> I need this retreat. I, so I want to talk about what we were thinking about for the retreat for 2022. And so the six of us got together and we came up with words like release, relax, renew, and replenish. And these words really appeal to us. And we feel that that's what we need. We're hoping that's what you need after the last few years that we have gone through. And um, so we want you to imagine a weekend of these, this focus. So imagine doing some yoga or some meditation or a hike or a cup of coffee with a couple of the women from this community and reconnecting with each other. That's what we want to create the space for, for all of you. Um, the retreat, I think the dates are up there. Yep, September 23rd through the 25th. And it's going to be from 6 p.m. on Friday to 11.30 on that Sunday. Um, it's for all women who are 21 and older. And we want a variety of women to be there. But we want to offer a special invitation to all of the mothers of mothers with young kids. This is a group that doesn't always feel like they can get away and come, but this is a community and we are here to support you. So we're doing a few things to encourage this particular group to also enroll in the women's retreat. Um, the youth group is going to offer a fun kids event for smaller kids on that Saturday to give whoever is watching the children um, a little bit of a break and some fun for the children. You can reach out to all of us, let us know what you need, and we will find somebody who can meet that need. We also encourage you to enroll early, and enrollment's gonna go to August 15th, but up to August 14th, you can get a full refund. So go ahead, no obligation, go ahead and enroll, um, register with the retreat, and if something comes up and you're not able to make it, you can get that full refund. Also, men, how many of you have women in your life? Show of hands. How many of you adore and love those women in your life? Yeah, you better get your hands up. <laughs> Let them know what you're going to do so that they can take this time for themselves, so that they can release, relax, renew, and replenish. Um, let's see. There are scholarships available. Um, if you want a scholarship, you just need to give me a phone call. My phone number will be on the GR code. Oh, it's right there. Contact Amy Bittner, and there's my phone number. Um, and let me know what your need is, and we do have those scholarships, and then we can give you a code before you register. Everybody else can go whoops, straight and register. So please come and join us, whether you are Ruth, who's 98 years old, whether you're Judy, I'm sorry, I know a Judy Ball, whether you're Betty Ball, who's been coming here for 30 years, or if you're somebody who's just joined us this week, come connect with us and give yourself this time. Thank you. So the QR code will take you directly to the registration um, blank. And so, you know, I'm just saying that might be a nice Mother's Day present. If somebody, <clears throat> some men, did, yeah, just saying. Um, and but it's going to be an awesome weekend, so we invite you all to uh, women to be a part of that. Um, I'm going to turn it over to who, which one of the Ball family is doing the benediction. I invite you to stand uh, for to receive God's blessings today. Yeah, did you want to talk oh, about Oh, yes. That? I do want to talk about that. I'm going to be really quick. 
um, next Sunday after the worship service um, in. Uh, in charge of the vision here. What's I have no on? idea. It's it, clearly it shouldn't be me, <laughs> uh, but. Next Sunday after worship, we're going to have a time of listening and conversation as uh, the council and staff roll out uh, the vision planning that they have been doing over the last five and a half months. And um, and so we invite you to do, to come and be a part of that, to hear the vision, to see yourself as a part of that, um, to ask questions, uh, those kind of things. Again, after worship next Sunday um, in, in uh, classrooms one and two. And, uh, and so, yeah, encourage, strongly encourage you to come and be a part of that with us. Yes, Peter. Yes, <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hands of God protect us. And may the way of God direct us and may the love of God go with us on this day and forever. Amen. Amen. Hey, uh, Craig or Deb, can you guys do me a favor real quick? Bring up a browser window. Type in River of Life. Just do me a favor. Bring up a browser window. Type up and bring up a video of the song River of Life. We're going to do it. We're going to do this song as we leave. But, um, but I want you to just share the browser window. That, and then I want everybody just quickly... To, to look carefully at the artist who sings this song. His name is Mac Powell. That's what it says on the web, on the World Wide Web. It says why doesn't, Mac, why doesn't Mac, every home in the U.S.? When, when you see this, I want you to see this. And I'm just concerned because I actually think it's Todd. I actually think if you look at the picture that the person who's singing this song is actually Todd Vanderwall. And uh, so what I think is we just have... We actually, you know, it's quite the quite the astonishing uh, similarity in terms of uh, in terms of in terms of what Todd looks like. Anyway, so we're gonna sing this song, and if Todd, now just share. I just want people to see it. I just want people to see the picture. That's all. Just bring it over so that people can see. And you tell me if Todd Vanderwall is not Mac Powell in disguise. Like so, you know, this is also my very non, uh, you know. Uh, not very uh, quiet way of saying, you should check out these videos with these uh, Christian artists that are singing. Um, did you get it? Just slide it up. We'll bring it up. We, if, you, if you don't, if we can't bring it up, then what I'll do is you guys can check it out. Check out Third Day, River of Life. We're going to sing this song and then look and see if, uh, if you think Tad bon Todd Vanderwall is actually Mac Powell in disguise. Oh, wait, wait. She says she has it. She's bringing it over. Is it coming? Here it comes. No, no, don't start the video. Just, just the picture is fine. Yeah. There you go. See, that's what I'm saying. That's all. That's very good. All right, now you can go back to the slides because we're going to do this song. Here we go, and then we'll get out of here because I know that, that people want to leave. One, two, three, four. Brothers, sisters, come on down to that river. Guaranteed you'll never be the same. There's a fountain flowing from the heart of the Savior. Bring your sins and all your guilty stains. Let the river of life wash it all away. You've been searching. Carrying burden, you've been lost and looking for a home. You've been drifting, something is missing. You should know that you are not alone. Hey, brothers, sisters, come on down to that river. Guarantee you'll never be saved. There's a fountain flowing from the heart of the Savior. Bring your sins and all your guilty stains. Let the river of life wash it all away. Sing, oh. Oh, 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 come on down to the river. Oh, oh, oh. come on down to the river. Oh, oh, oh. Come on down to the river. Here we go. 
come as you are. No time to waste, open your heart. Don't be afraid, jump on in. The water is fine, healing in the river. Come as you are, no time to waste. Open your heart and don't be afraid. Jump on in, the water is fine, healing in the river of life. Brothers, sisters, come on down to that river. There's a fountain flowing from the heart of the Savior. Bring your sins and all your guilt is stained. By the blood of Jesus, everything will change. With the river of life, wash it all away. Sing, oh, oh, come on down to the river, oh. The river. Come on down to the river. Let the river of life wash it all away. All right, you guys sound good. Have a great week. God bless. This drone is designed to save lives mysteriously disappeared. There's a tiny US drone.